Hey, what's up guys? My name is David with Beckmotion.com and I'm here with another quick tutorial. Um, basically one of the things that I have a hard time with when coming from Cinema 4D into After Effects is uh, just it's a little bit difficult sometimes to work with the camera. Um, just working in a 3D environment is completely different than a 2.5D environment. So one of the things I often miss most when coming into after Effects is the target object that you can create in Cinema 4D. and um, That essentially just enables you to take your camera and have a target object that it's always constantly focusing on. Um, so here's a quick solution for that that I've begun to use. Now obviously um, Obviously, sometimes you don't want to use this. You want to have the ability to rack focus and whatnot, but when there's a lot of movement and you're staying on, say, a logo, and you know that you want that to be the focus at all times, and um, some cut scenes, you can potentially use a different camera and to get that rack focus or whatever. This is a perfect um, solution. So we'll go ahead and spread these three layers out in 3D space, and... Um, take a look at the problem that I'm referring to before we figure out the solution. So here's my um, close object, we'll rename it. Here's my far, we'll rename it. I've set them all in 3D space. One's at zero and one's at negative a thousand, one's at a thousand in Z space. And we'll just align them so we can see them, kind of frame them up a little bit make it easier on ourselves. Here's the close one. Bring it down a little bit. So at this point in the scene I'm going to pull in my camera and everything's looking good. I've got some objects spread across 3D space ready to rock and roll and I throw it in the scene and all of a sudden my close object because I've chosen a wide angle lens something I like to do often, is no longer in the scene. This is because After Effects automatically adjusts the length, or the, I should say the Z position of your camera upon the length of the lens that you choose. So 27 millimeter, it's always going to, um, it's always going to frame Z, the zero Z point in Z space, meaning where the target is at fully by the camera focal length you choose. Uh, essentially, all, all I'm trying to say is that your camera will be at different points in Z space depending on the focal length of your lens. And this can cause objects that are close to be cut out of the scene. So in this scenario, I pull back in Z space and good, now I am set. Everything is back into, v into view and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and jack up the, um, I can turn down the aperture or f-stop, I mean, um, but I'm actually going to just do blur level and keep it easy on ourselves. We'll go to 470. Actually, we'll make it pretty extreme, 550. And now we've got this depth of field, but it doesn't look like I've got um, full, full focus on the target object. And that's because I moved myself back. So in this scenario, we could do a couple of different things. I could either, you know, settle for um, it and not not care, which is probably the worst solution. Um, I can also go out into my custom view and adjust it manually what my target distance is, which is a good solution, um, but not always pinpoint perfect accurate. Um, and so what I'm going to do instead is go ahead and um, let's go back to our view and pull out even further. What I'm going to do instead is set up an expression that's going to automatically target it. So let's jump in this view so we can see the problem and then um, go from there to fix it. Um, so here's where I'm focusing right now, I believe, and then here's my target object. Um, let's take a look. Yes. So there we are in focus. And I'm just going to pull back to where I was. That means full blur length at that, at that distance. And um, I'm going to jump into my camera options here and um, give myself a little space just because I need to be able to pick whip, whip to things. And I'm going to alt click on focus distance, type length. I don't know if it has to be capital or what. 
Um, sometimes it makes a difference, but we'll just try this for now. Pick width to my position of the camera, push comma, and then pick width, width to the position of my target, and then end the parentheses. So again, that's uh, alt click on focus distance, type length, then parentheses, position of camera, comma, position of target. And if we click off and we did everything right, now when I look at my camera, its focus area is directly upon that target, just as we had hoped for. Didn't have to do it manually. We know we're as in focus as we can possibly get, no matter how high I jack up uh, this blur level. I know that it's going to be perfectly in focus. I'm going to go back down a little bit and um, go down to 700 blur level. And then if I move this alleged logo or target object, whatever you want to call it, in Z space, it's going to update and, um, and continue to be in focus. And you can even see the one in the background get more and more blown out um, as I bring it in. And this close one is going to become more and more in focus as I go up. So I hope that I went a little too extreme with that. I hope that gives you an idea of how to create a target object, and I hope you can find some awesome uses for it. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks so much. Follow me at Beater Becker, or sorry, at Beck Motion on Twitter, and uh, come visit my blog sometime at beckmotion.com. Have a good night.